Math 1314, Tyler Jr. College, section 2.1, basics of functions and their graphs. Equations as relations and functions. In the previous two videos, we defined relation, domain, and range, which was necessary to define a function. I've erased the definition of a function, but just as a reminder, a function is a relation where each element of the domain is paired with exactly one element of the range. We're going to need that definition as we explore whether or not equations can be functions. But in order to be a function, you must first be a relation, and a relation by definition is a set of ordered pairs. So how can we justify saying that an equation is a relation? Why is an equation considered a relation? Well, the answer is actually quite simple. An equation can generate ordered pairs. Now, what do I mean by generate ordered pairs? Well, if you have an equation, an ordered pair either is a solution or is not. For example, and then we'll get to the question, are these functions, is... 3 comma 10 a solution to this equation? Well, assuming that x is the first coordinate and y is the second coordinate, which by the way, we will always make that assumption, but there are math classes where they're reversed. It's y comma x instead of x comma y. But if we assume x is the first coordinate, we're basically asking, can we substitute 3 for the x, 10 for the y, and get the same thing on both sides? If we put in the 10 for the y, question mark over the equal sign, because we're asking, are these equal, and substitute a 3 for the x, it doesn't take too long to figure out that 3 squared is 9, and then plus 1 is 10. So yes, 3 comma 10 is the solution to the equation y equals x squared plus 10. That means if I were listing a set of ordered pairs for this equation, this would be in that set. Now, how many solutions could we generate? In short, an infinite number of them. So you can think of an equation as an implied relation. In other words, you can think of an equation as implying a set of ordered pairs instead of explicitly listing them all. All right. So yes, every equation in x and y is a relation because if an ordered pair makes the equation true, it belongs to the relation, otherwise it does not. For example, if we said 3 comma 11, that would not work here because 3 comma 10 worked. 3, 3 won't give us 11. If we put in 3 for the x, it won't give us an expression equal to 11. But how are we going to answer the question, are these equations functions? Well, we could look for empirical evidence or we could try to think about this a little more analytically. Now, what do I mean by empirical evidence? If this is a function, then every x will give us exactly one y value because every element in the domain is paired with exactly one element in the range. So think about it. Think of a number. Keep it small because I'm going to ask you to do the math in your head. Think of a number, put it here where the x is. So square your number. Now add one to that answer. And my question is, how many final answers do you have? You should only have a single answer, right? For example, if your final answer was 26, you started with probably with x equals 5. You could have started with x equals negative 5. So it seems like if we substitute one value for x, we will get exactly one value for y. To not be a function, I would have to find a value of x that would produce two values of y, and we're not going to be able to do that. So this one is a function. Yes, every x will be paired with exactly one y. What about this one? x equals the absolute value of y plus 4. This one's a little trickier to attack, 
But don't we have a technique for solving absolute value equations? We do. And really what we're trying to figure out is if x equals something, must y equal exactly one thing? Or can y equal multiple things? Now let's look for empirical evidence. For example, let's say, suppose, I don't know, pick any number. Let's say x equals 7. If this is a function, then when I substitute 7 for the x, I have to get exactly one answer. Now that won't make it a function. That just won't break it. You can't check every ordered pair to see if it is, but you only need one ordered pair to show that it isn't. So let's pretend x is equal to 7. We have a technique for solving this. I'm not going to review it. It's in the previous series of videos. I'm just going to do it. To solve absolute value equal to number, you put the inside equal to the number, but you also put the inside equal to the opposite of the number. So either y plus 4 is 7, or y plus 4 is negative 7. And if we solve both of these, we get y equals 3, but we also get y equals negative 11. Which means that 7 as the x, comma 3 as the y, is a solution to this equation, but so is 7, comma negative 11. And that pair of order pairs violates the definition of a function. So the answer is no, it's not a function. But that's if you attack it empirically. Let me look for evidence that you are not a function. You don't seek evidence that it is, because to show it is, you would have to show every single order pair works. We don't have time to check an infinite number of order pairs. But to show it's not a function, you just have to break it once. Now, if you didn't want to just pick a number at random and hope to get lucky, you can actually try to solve this for y generically. And this is going to be a recurring theme when we're determining if, a fun if an equation is a function. Let's solve for y, because the real question we're asking is when we put in a number for x, what will y equal? Will it equal one number? Will it equal multiple numbers? Well, even though this has two variables, we can still solve it for y using the same technique we did a moment ago. To solve an absolute value equation, you put the inside equal to what's on the outside, but you also put the inside equal to the opposite of what's on the outside. So y plus 4 equals x, and y plus 4 equals negative x. I can solve both of these pretty easily. y equals x minus 4, but at the same time y equals negative x minus 4. So no matter what x value I pick, no matter what x value I pick, as long as it's a permissible one, I say that because remember that absolute value always comes out non-negative. So I can't say what if x equals negative 2, but what if x equals 10? Then 10 minus 6 is 4 is one value of y. Negative 10 minus 4 is negative 14 is another value of y. But generically, each x in the domain will be paired with two different y values dictated by these equations. So, no matter how we slice it, this is not a function. What about the last one? 3x plus 4y equals 12. Well, let's think about it. We need to make sure that when we pick 1x, we only get 1y. So we can look for empirical evidence by picking a value for x. For example, let's say you let x equal, oh, I don't know, 8. Then substituting 8 here would give 3 times 8, which is 24. So we get 24 plus 4y equals 12. Subtract 24 from both sides to get y equals negative 12. Divide both sides by negative 3. So we get y equals negative 3, but more importantly, we get only y equals negative 3. Now, does this show the equation is a function? No, because this has to work for every single x. We only have to break it once, like when we said x equals, I forgot what we said x equals a minute ago. I think it was 7. Um, if you can violate the definition once, it's over. It's not a function. But if you satisfy the definition once, that's not enough because you have to show it's satisfied all the time. You only have to show it's unsatisfied once. So are we just going to keep doing this over and over? 
with every possible value of x, we simply don't have that time. So we can't attack this one empirically, but we can attack it analytically, kind of like we did here. Analytically means if I pick a generic value of x, how many values of y will we get? So in other words, we want to know what y equals all the time, not just one time. So we're going to solve for y. And in general, to see if an equation represents a function, solve for y. If what you get will only produce a single value for y, then we're good. But if what you get will produce multiple values of y, then you're not a function. Let's solve this for y. It's not as hard as it seems. All we have to do is isolate the y, so let's start by moving the 3x over. That will make it a negative 3x. The 12 is positive, so I'm going to write plus 12. And then divide everything by 4, and we get y equals negative 3x plus 12 over 4. And now the question is, when I substitute a single value of x, how many answers will I get? 1. Pick any number you want. For example, pick 10. But let's pick negative 10. If I put negative 10 here, okay, I'll get negative 3 times negative 10 is 30. 30 plus, 40, 30 plus 12 is 42. 42 divided by 4 is 10.5. But it doesn't matter what 42 divided by 4 is. What matters is that we only get one answer, whatever the answer to 42 divided by 4 is. And that will be the same for any x value. So if you can solve for y and get it equal to a single expression in x, then it is a function. But if you solve for y and it's equal to multiple expressions in x, it's not a function. So this one is yes. I know this video is probably already past the 10 minute mark, we're about to check, but I want to show you one more example. Actually, I've got a few more things I need to say, so I don't think I'm going to show you an example. What I do want to do, however, is focus on the two that are functions. Oh, by the way, this one that I'm currently erasing, x is not a function of y. Because when I have a single x, I can get multiple y values. But on this one, y is a function of x. Meaning if I pick a y value, I'll get a single x value. So it's important to establish who is the first and second coordinates because although this equation is not a function, more specifically, y is not a function of x, picking one x will produce multiple y values. x is a function of y. Picking a y value would produce a single x value. So let's get, go back to these two that are functions. y equals x squared plus 1 and 3x plus 4y equals 12, which is equivalent to what I just erased, y equals negative 3x plus 12 all over 4. So those two equations are equivalent. When you have an equation that represents a function, the x is called the independent variable. And in general, when you have any relation that's a function, the domain variable is called the independent variable. The range variable, which in this case is y, or the second coordinates variable, I should say, is called the dependent variable. Why? Because what we're kind of implying here is that the value of y depends on the value of x. But, value of x can be selected independently. Independently. So anytime you have a function, the domain variable is called the independent variable, and the range variable is called the dependent variable. Because this value depends upon what I put here, not vice versa. Same thing over here. Because we can solve this for y and get a single expression in x, we can say that the value of y depends on the value of x, and therefore the y is the dependent variable. x, we just pick one independently, so the x is the independent variable. This equation is actually pretty interesting because y is a function of x, but x is also a function of y. 
meaning if I solve this for x, I would get a single value, a single expression. Specifically, I would get x equals negative 4y plus 12 over 3. So if you really want to get abstract about it, in an upper-level math class as it is, it's not always x is first and y is second. It's not always x is independent and y is dependent. It's all a matter of perspective. So this is what I would call a two-way function. Y is a function of x and x is a function of y. This one's not. Y is a function of x, meaning that if I pick a single x value, I will get a single y value. But what would happen if you tried to solve this for x, make it say x equals? Well, I'll spare you the details, but I'll briefly describe them. You would subtract one from both sides, then you would hit both sides with the square root. But remember, that's the move that brings in the plus minus. So if we solve that for x, we would get x equals plus minus the square root of y minus 1. And remember, this is shorthand for two equations. x equals the square root of y minus 1, and x equals negative the square root of y minus 1. So if we picked, a, if we picked a, uh, an allowable y value, for example, if we picked y equals 5, 5 minus 1 is 4, the square root of 4 is 2, x could be 2. 5 minus 1 is 4, the negative square root of 4 is negative 2, x could be negative 2. So it would be incorrect to say that x is a function of y because a single y value could produce multiple x values. But it is correct to say that y is a function of x because a single x value will always produce a single y value. There are some equations that are functions in both directions. There are some that are not. But for our purposes, and I'm really going beyond what you need to know for this course, for our purposes, we will almost always ask the question, is y a function of x? Meaning, x is the domain variable, y is the range variable, and more specifically, if I pick a value of x, will it always generate a single value for y? If the answer is yes, you're a function. Long video.